Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in the LLMs related playlist. In this video, we are going to see how to process an invoice and generate a structured output from the model, which is a JSON structure. Because uh, we developers usually need some kind of a JSON output, which is very convenient for us to work with when we are working with our APIs, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to constrain your model to generate as a JSON. So let's jump into the video right now. To achieve this task of making the model to generate output in a structured JSON format, that too without fine tuning, we are going to use a library known as JSON Former because it is claimed that the JSON Former is a bulletproof way to generate structured JSON output from the language models. Necessarily not any single model, you can just pass any of your models which should be in hugging face, right? The problem was that the models weren't able to generate a structured output. That was the problem statement and solution was that they made a decoding method such that it will generate only the content tokens to fill in the fixed tokens. Let's say you are providing a JSON schema and then there will be some kind of a filling area in, inside and it will try to fill those tokens alone. That is how the generation has been processed in this JSON former. So let me give a gist of what they are doing and what are all there and we'll go for an example of invoice transformed into a JSON output. Finally, I'll show you what is the source code inside. I'll give a brief outline of what is the code and how it is going the flow. Okay. So as far as uh, the introduction is concerned, it is claimed that uh, it is very challenging task, which is very true. And uh, the challenge is because the generated output should be syntactically correct and it should also match the schema which we provide, right? That is the main problem with the model being forced to generate based on a JSON schema. So JSON uh, former has a new approach for this where what they're doing is they are providing a wrapper around hugging face model such that this wrapped model will try to generate only the fixed tokens during the generation process. We'll call this model.generate usually, right? So when you call that model.generate, it will try to just generate the filling tokens, not any other tokens, okay? So that is how they have made this JSON former and it supports the following schema types. Number, which is like in float, uh, whatever you have, uh, everything will come under number. And then true or false will be under boolean string for any string. Okay, let's say you are having a date or uh, like let's say you have uh, a number, account number, but there is some hyphen inside it. Still, you should put it under string. Okay, and array for list of any items and object. Object is one entity which will have uh, many other entities. And you will understand what is object when we are uh, seeing how to process the invoice. Okay. So before going on to our use case of processing an invoice and generating a JSON output out of it, we'll see first what they have provided as an official example. So here, if you see, they are loading uh, a 12 billion model of Databricks. And uh, the question is that they are asking the model to generate a person's information based on the following schema, which is this schema. The type is object and uh, properties are name is a string and age is a number, is student, is boolean, and then courses, type is array and items is string. So what happens is it will try to generate a string name, a number age, and he is student or not. Based on that, it will try to generate a value for his student. And for courses, it will try to generate a list where in the list, everything will be string. So that is what it mentions. Type array means that it is a list of value and items inside the type being mentioned as string means that the list will have string values okay and uh, here you can see car type is object make uh, model a8 these are all there this is another json schema okay this is different this is uh, some kind of a personal information generation and here uh, again with the same approach they have generated 
uh, for uh, car okay so they have asked to make us uh, audi a audi model is a8 and then air uh, being provided as number colors is provided as uh, array and then we have uh, features which is an object here and inside that audio is another object which will have the following uh, properties brand which has a value of uh, string which is sony and speakers is number which is 2.0 and uh, has bluetooth is boolean which is generated as true so on and so forth till the end and here you can see it is a clear json right like uh, it is not missing anywhere and if you pass this and you can even call like let's say you have this thing like an api where you need to call these separately you want to call the first name of owner then you can go like output of owner of first name and it will give the first name so it is very easy to work with <coughs> when you are working with json former but still this json former has a slight disadvantage which i'll say at the end of this video which i noticed right so here is the google collab notebook first we'll see the dependencies to be installed the first thing to install is transformers accelerate json former their library and bits and bytes so transformer is the library which will help us to interact with the hugging face hub it is very important because json former expects a transformer model from hugging face all right so next we have accelerate which is to have efficient gpu and cpu computing json former which is the json former's library and bits and bytes so that we can load our model in quantized version okay so let me run this okay let me restart my runtime so now it's working next uh, what you need to do is you need to log into the notebook so let's run that because uh, like i said you need to work with hugging face hub models for which you need to log into their hub okay especially we are using llama 27 billion chat hugging face model okay so it is better that uh, you, you first log in it and uh, for this you need to have the access of llama 27 billion okay so now so what we are going to do is we are going to load the model in a quantized version for which we need auto model for cos llm which is to load the model and then tokenizer to load the tokenizer config to load the model config from which we can load the model and then we have bits and bytes config so that we can provide the configuration for the model but without that also you can do uh, that is how we have done here okay so next we have uh, torch being imported let's run this in a separate cell here the model id is provided as llama 27 billion chat hf and then we are checking if there is cuda which is there so what will happen is it will go and get the configuration of uh, llama to 7 billion we are setting that uh, we should replicate the pre-training performance and then we are loading the model with the model id which is llama to 7 billion chat hf and the configuration is provided and the torch d type is flow 16 and then bits and bytes config is provided here which is load in 4 bit is stated as true the bits and bytes 4 bit quant type is normal float precision 4 bnb 4 bit uh, compute d type is flow 16 and bnb 4 bit use double quant is set to true okay so these are all the configuration in which we are loading the model and we are setting the device map to be auto all right so i hope this is clear so once you load the model next you need to load the tokenizer in which we are setting the use catch is equal to true so that this is for inference okay now it is loading until then i'll show you <coughs> about the json schema in json former we need two main functions one is highlight values so that it will process the output and show it as a json and then we'll have a json former class imported from json former main okay so let me rename this as received so it is loading now uh, let me show you the receipt first i hope you all know this receipt i have shown this receipt in the previous video of processing invoice by using uh, langchain as a project i have shown you how to process invoice and this is the input so don't worry i'll provide this notebook the link will be in the description so you necessarily need not worry about uh, the invoice so 
now let's see how to process this what are all i'm expecting from this model is i need the invoice number i need the date of issue i need the seller name the seller address the seller tax id and similarly client name client address and client tax id okay so these are all something i'm expecting from the model and then the total okay so for this what we need to do first everything will be an object so first we'll name it as an object the type will be object and then the properties will have the following here you can see the seller has name address and tax id right so we'll combine these as a single object so seller object will have the following properties which is name address and tax id everything being string so why did i provide a string here you can see tax id though it is number it has an iphone inside it and that will be hard for the model to generate as number okay so we are generating a uh, seller as such with having the properties as name address and tax id so it will try to identify that okay i need to find the seller name seller address and seller tax id and then i'll club those into and sing a single object known as seller so similarly it will happen with client where we have provided the type as object and properties as name address and tax id with everything being string and next i have also said you that i need the date of issue invoice number and total right so for this what you need to provide is invoice number so let's see what is the invoice number here so the invoice number is something like a normal number which means you can provide it as a number itself and then the total has some dollar in it but still i'm expecting this alone to be generated okay so here we have the type is provided as number and then the date here you can see it is there is a slash provided in it in it and uh, they don't have any default type for dates so we'll provide it as string itself so this is the json schema which we are uh, expecting the model to fill so let me run this in a separate cell so it's running and then next what you need to do is uh, you need to call the json former class okay in json former class we need to provide the model which we have provided it which is the quantized version of llama to 7 billion chat we need to provide the tokenizer which is provided and then the json schema which is folded by the variable received which is also provided and then we have the prompt which is uh, the receipt basically so we are providing this and then we are saying output is equal to builder now you can see we are not calling any function because the json former uh, class they have implemented a dunder call function so which means if you call the object itself it will try to execute all the functions okay so let me run this so as you can see here guys uh, the model is generated and it has been pretty accurate i'll say as you can see here um i'm asking the seller which is brown johnson it has claimed let's see if it is correct it is brown johnson and then the address is 310 amanda corner suite 472 north william mn 33119 is that what it's generated so it is not generated completely but it is okay it is saying 310 amanda corner suite and then the tax id has been generated correctly so similarly it has done the same thing with uh, client as well it ignored the second line basically and then as far as uh, invoice number is concerned it took from the top it was a piece of cake for it i guess it is 12064 so it is generated that correctly and the total is also generated correctly i showed you right it is generated correctly and then we have the date which is interesting here we just specified it as date and it is 82920 right so it just formatted it to be year month and date it formatted it correctly so the model itself identified that okay this is date and i'll format it such that you will have the year and then the followed by that you will have the month and then you will have the date and uh, here you can see it took around 20 seconds and that is the small disadvantage with this model or rather this kind of a json former uh, wrapped model the thing is uh, it is very computationally intensive it requires a gpu and it is taking around 15 to 20 seconds if you have a lot of things to extract um, even if you 
did some kind of uh, question answering right let's say you're asking what is the seller name what is the ad uh, seller address what is the tax id what is the uh, client name what is the client address what is the client tax id what is the invoice number what is the total what is the date let's say you have uh, everything as three seconds let's consider that three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen uh twenty one twenty four twenty seven it takes around twenty five twenty seven seconds and here it is just twenty two seconds but the thing is it will be computationally intensive so it will require a gpu but there you can have a leisure of running it in cpu but the time will take a lot okay but uh, it has been pretty good to work with this model uh architecture uh, i tend to call it model i don't know why but it is kind of an architecture which which will wrap the model and then make it to generate the filler so here you can see right this will be kind of the filler and it will try to wrap this with the value okay let's say if it is client name it will say it say it as what it is um calderin duran okay so this is how this json farmer works and guys uh, in the next video i'll show you how to build a real world application with this json farmer okay i'll show an application with UI interface where you can load the JSON schema, you can load the receipt and then it will try to process and generate an output. Okay, so I'll show you that. But for now, let me show you the source code of JSON form. Here you can see uh, this is the source code of JSON former and we'll go into the library in which we call the JSON former class from main, right? That is the core. So let's go into that. And here this is JSON former. Now we might wonder, like, uh, like I said, wasn't where is the function? Here there is no function, right? We just call the object. That is because they have implemented dunder call method. If you call the dunder call method default by default, if you call the function of object, it will try to generate the output. And here you can see they are calling a function called generate object. So let us go for the generate object. So generate object function, what it will do is like I said, it is a hierarchy, right? First, an object which may have objects inside it and those objects will have some properties which is the items and uh, each property will have a key and then the value being filled by a, filled by the model and those keys are of different types, string and then array or uh, number, boolean, everything. So, the first thing would be to go into generate object and then they are going into the generate value based on the schema to get the value for the key okay so they are checking the num values here like the type here if it is number they'll call the generate number function if it is boolean they'll call the generate boolean function if it is string they'll call the generate string and array they'll call generate array and then uh, if it is object again like i said it is a hierarchy right they'll call the generate object it will, it will go as a recursive call like again it will go to generate object and then if it is another thing inside there it will go inside and inside so that is how it works all right so they have made a specific decoding method um to make the model to generate constrained output as you can see here uh, they have number stopping criteria and then output numbers tokens these are all uh, some things which they have written in logic processors so yeah guys uh, that is json former uh, for us to generate a json output processing and invoice like i said in the next video i'll show you all how to make a real world application to process the invoices and i'll see you all in the next video until then if you like this video hit the like button which is a motivation for me to make more such videos and it will also help youtube to recommend our channel and more people will find this video useful if you find this useful and comment your suggestions in the comment section also share it among with your friends and communities i'll see you all in the next video guys until then cheers